Apparently, the world's largest snowflake was 15 inches in diameter and eight inches thick. I've got a handy measuring mat and I think we should recreate it in here to see what we're aiming for. So, do you guys think that a snowflake this big is actually possible? I mean, look at it, it's massive. No. Why? I think, well, because something this size wouldn't form in the atmosphere and a snowflake is something that's forming in the atmosphere. Once, once it lands on the ground, it's just part of the snowpack. And so whatever they found, you know, it wasn't a snowflake, it was something which had already probably coagulated on, on, on the surface once it had landed. The scientists I was with in Manchester seemed a little bit dubious that snowflakes that big could fall from the sky. So I'm about to chat to Ben from the Guinness World Records, who is going to tell me a little bit more, hopefully, about this 1887 snowflake record and whether it really is true or not. Hi, Ben. Thanks so much for chatting. Hi. Tell me a bit about what we know about the world's largest snowflake. What's the record that you have on file for that? Uh, that particular record comes from... Uh, a newspaper clipping, we believe, and it claims that there were snowflakes of 38 centimetres in diameter that fell in, well, originally it claimed it fell in Fort Keogh, Montana, in uh, 1887. Because 38 centimetres seems absolutely extraordinarily large for a snowflake. And as you say, I mean, this was a very, very long time ago. We don't have any photos and we're relying on accounts from the time. Like, how do we know that, that we don't just have a collection of embellished accounts that people wrote at the yeah. time to make a good story? So a few years ago, I came across this record in a dusty corner of our database and I thought it looked a bit dubious. So I started chasing that down and I found the sort of seminal work on the subject which is William Pike's Unusually Large Snowflakes which was a scientific paper published in 1988. Managed to track it to the original newspaper report which is a wire story. Most of that appears to be lies. Um, it's all very strange. It makes claims that cattle were falling into the Missouri River, but a letter written to the editor of the local paper points out that the Missouri River was frozen three feet thick. Essentially, I managed to track it to the Missoulian, I think it was called, a newspaper in far west of Montana. And yeah, it, it is a legitimate story. There are several newspaper accounts, first-hand accounts written by people who were there, who name check various people, who talk about and give various size comparisons for these snowflakes. So although we don't have any photos and we don't have any scientific measurements, this is one where I am fairly confident that this is correct. This is a first-hand account. So, I mean, I could read you some of the original account if you'd be interested. To sure, hear yeah. And it has the headline, uh, Snowflakes the Size of Cowboy Hats. And it opens with, The first we heard of it was last Sunday when a bright young man of our acquaintance called our attention to a lump of snow, probably 15 inches square and about 8 inches thick. How's that for a snowflake? said he. It took several minutes for us to thoroughly understand what he meant, but several people came to his rescue and corroborated the statement that the lump of beautiful snow was all one flake. It had been brought to town in a sleigh on the ground in the vicinity of Matt Coleman's ranch. He said there are thousands of such bunches of snow lying where they had fallen. And it then goes on to, you know, uh, mention the mailman who saw it, the guy who was delivering milk, who measured them and said they were the same size as his milk pails. They give a lot of concrete comparisons. It seems credible. Yeah, it does have the quite amusing conclusion, which is uh, referring to the phenomenon when speaking to a gentleman who is well up in learning and scientific research. He said he could see that a whirlwind might make hail, but he'd be damned if he could understand this thing. Damned being asterisked out because this was a respectable publication. Mm. So, I mean, that kind of chimes with some of the scientists that I've spoken to about this record who also seem frankly baffled that you could have a snowflake this size and they are slightly doubtful that something like this could form. Has anyone ever come close 
to beating the record? Like, have you had any submissions that suggest that there has been a snowflake this large in modern times? In the, the William Pike paper, he gives a couple of examples throughout the 20th century where documented examples from like weather observers and things of snowflakes that weren't that big. They were, they were pretty close. I think one of them's eight inches in diameter. But the idea of a sort of dinner plate sized uh, snowflake is not impossible and seems to be fairly widely corroborated. It does seem like under some very specific atmospheric conditions, things can accumulate together like this. There's a lot of coverage that the winter of 1887 in Montana was a particularly cold and quite strange one. There was a lot of peculiar weather, so. Mm, that's really interesting. Thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. It's okay. Well, that was an interesting conversation. It seems like even if we don't have any photographs of these giant snowflakes, the Guinness World Records are pretty confident that there were some very large snowflakes falling in the winter of 1887, in that part of the US at least. And maybe they don't have the exact measurements, but all the first-hand accounts suggest that there's some pretty strange snowfall. Three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>